bad premonitions do come true. In a dusty room, turned into a storage space in the detached part of my parents' house. I sensed the presence of someone who shouldn't be there. I pressed my ear against the wall. The sound of a man and a woman growling like beasts, and the rustling of clothes. It was clear what they were doing. The sound of my own heartbeat echoed throughout my body. What are those two doing? Knowing that my daughter and I are on the same property. I felt sick with disgust. I locked the room from the outside. The two of them are so engrossed that they haven't noticed. My name is Catherine, I'm 37 years old. My husband, John, our kindergarten age daughter, Lily, and I are a family of three. Starting today, we will be staying at my parents' house. Which is a 30-minute drive away, for three days. Usually, my parents and grandmother live there, just the three of them. Recently, my parents won a pair of travel tickets in a neighborhood association lottery. And decided to go on a Las Vegas trip for two nights and three days. My grandmother is a bit frail, but can take care of herself. Please call me only when you need a car, they said. But wouldn't she feel lonely staying by herself for three days? Besides, she has been becoming more forgetful and spacey lately, probably due to her age. Concerned, I discussed this with my husband, John. He said. If you're worried about grandma, why don't we all stay over? All of us? Playing with her great-granddaughter will be good exercise for her. And it'll surely be fun and lively. That might be a good idea. Thus, we decided to spend three days with my grandmother at my parents' house. On the day my parents left for their trip. My daughter and I arrived at my grandparents' house, where my grandmother was waiting. My husband will come after he finishes work. I said hello at the entrance but my grandmother, hard of hearing, didn't notice. Inside, she was drinking tea in the living room. Great grandma, hello. Who is it? It's Lily. Ah, uh. Lily, is it? She looked at me and again asked, who is it? She might be starting to show signs of dementia, not just forgetfulness. It's me, Catherine. We'll be staying over starting today, so please take care of us. Yes, yes, I understand. Coming here was the right decision. Leaving her alone would have been worrisome. Since having my daughter, I occasionally visited my parents' house. But this is the first time we're staying over. Until recently, there were concerns about infectious diseases. And interactions between infants and the elderly were avoided. It's not completely safe now, but I don't think there's a need to be overly fearful. My parents' house is a typical countryside home, large and old. There's the main house, a garden, and a detached area. Originally, the detached area had rooms for me and my siblings. Now, it's turned into a storage space for farming tools, my brother's hobbies and collections. Old study desks, and broken appliances. Everything is just put here for now. They should just throw it all away. It's a typical thing for a family home. Mom, what's over there? Lily, we can't play in the detached area. Why? There might be dangerous things, and besides, there might be ghosts. Ghosts? She shrinks a little in fear. Indeed, this is an effective way to convince a child. Inside, she was drinking tea in the living room. My daughter spoke to her. Lily, it's true. Eh, there are ghosts? Yes, they go. Woo! I'm scared, Grandma. It was surprising that my grandmother played along. But it seemed to have convinced her thoroughly. I don't want my daughter to get close to the detached area. It hasn't been cleaned in a while, so the air isn't good and various things get into the old building. Draft and insects, for example. And, there are many of my brother's belongings left since he moved out. My brother used to tinker with motorcycles, so parts and tools were scattered everywhere. 
It's dirty and dangerous, so I don't want her to touch anything. Adult magazines are also messily placed around. Featuring risque gravitation of actresses and retired idols. According to my brother, they're rare and no longer available, so they're valuable. And cannot be discarded. He should keep them with him if they're so valuable. The front door opens, and a cheerful voice is heard. Yo. Who, long time no see. It's my sister, Daisy. My sister is single and often works at night, so it's been a while since we've met. Sis, what brings you here? What's wrong with coming back home? You usually don't bother. I heard you were staying over, so I came too. Who did you hear it from? Ah. Uh. I bumped into your husband by chance and he told me. My sister is a free spirit. At 40, she still hasn't settled into a steady job. Alternating between working at bars and temporarily involved in cocktail party businesses. Living day by day. She calls herself a straightforward woman who loves herself. And boasts about the numerous men who support her financially and her popularity among them. I think it's her life, so she should do as she pleases, but every time she meets our parents. They worry about her, and it seems she finds it bothersome. I'll be staying for a while too. That's okay, right, grandma? Oh. And who might you be? My grandmother said this as she looked closely at my sister's face. Whether it's because of her forgetfulness or my sister's heavy makeup, I couldn't tell. Hey. It's me, Daisy. Oh, Yuri, of course. You're more than welcome to stay. I'm not thrilled about my daughter spending time with my foul-mouthed sister. But if grandma says it's okay, then I guess it can't be helped. Lily is still young, so please don't be too loud. I know that, thanks. Looking forward to it. Saying this to me, my sister promptly lies down to relax. Huh? What does she mean by looking forward to it? Am I supposed to take care of my sister too? It's bold of her to come and relax so blatantly when our nagging parents are away. My sister can be quite cunning. I'd like a chicken pot pie for dinner. Hey, if you're going to request something, at least help out. My nails are too long, I can't. Sis, at your age, having such long nails. Then, my daughter, staring intently at my sister's nails, said. Auntie, are you a witch? Huh? Did you just call me auntie? To her niece, she would be an aunt. I don't see anything wrong with that. You should call me big sister. Big sister? That's right or I'll scratch you with my witch's nails. I'm disappointed by my sister's childish behavior. What big sister? She should take a look at herself first. Maybe her mirror is foggy. By the time the requested chicken pot pie is ready, my husband has returned from work. The scene looks like a party, and everyone seems to be having fun. Although my sister and husband haven't met since our wedding, they hit it off immediately since both enjoy drinking. The dinner table is very lively. My grandmother looks happy throughout. My husband seems quite drunk and cheerful. Hey, John, don't drink too much. When I expressed my concern, my sister interjected. It's fine. Catherine, you're always so uptight. If you keep up with sis, you'll end up wasted. Stop nagging. John, come on, drink up. Yes, cheers. He's already quite drunk. This is going to be a hangover for sure. I can't deal with two drunkards. I've given my warning, so it's their responsibility from here on. My daughter and I took a bath, did bed making in grandma's room, and went to sleep at our usual time. The next morning, as expected, I found the two of them sleeping in the living room. The room filled with the smell of alcohol. Nothing was cleaned up. Not that I was expecting it. I'm just glad today is a holiday. 
That's exactly why I told you. What are you two doing? Hearing this, my husband abruptly woke up. Where am I? We're at my parents' house. Did you forget? Ugh. My head hurts. You drank too much. Why don't you take a shower? My husband groaned his way to the bathroom, while my sister didn't wake up at all. She seemed to be sleeping comfortably, but she was in the way, so I decided to wake her up. Sis, it's morning. I tried to shake her awake, but she seemed to still be in a dream. No way. Can you not make such gross sounds? Huh? Catherine? Oh, it's just you, Catherine. She smirked, seemingly still under the influence of alcohol. Hey, Catherine, John is quite a catch, isn't he? Right? He's kind and a good man. They seem to have gotten quite close after drinking together. Looking forward to tonight. Huh? Drink by yourself today, okay? No way, I want to drink with John. You always drink too much. It's your own fault if you wreck your health. You're such a bore. Don't come crying to me if John leaves you. Don't worry about it. Since my sister went back to sleep, I decided to leave her be. She's really selfish. After cleaning up breakfast, I went to tidy up the garden with my grandmother. It was a relaxing holiday. My daughter, who had been playing around the house, came over and said, Mom, there's an animal inside the house. Really? This way. Led by my daughter, we walked through the connecting corridor to the main house. Ahead was the detached area, old and slightly damp. Lily, I told you the detached area is off-limits because ghosts might appear. Sorry, but I heard an animal's voice. She must have gotten close while playing. There are three sliding doors lined up my room, my brothers, and my sisters from left to right. A little further away is the bathroom door. It's nostalgic but also gives me a bad feeling. I'll check for ghosts, so go back to grandma. Okay, got it. My daughter ran back. Now, it was time for me to face this bad feeling. I sensed someone's presence inside. I could hear muffled voices and noises. I quietly entered the room that used to be mine, now a dusty storage space. The moment I entered, I understood the situation. In the next room, my brother's old room, there were my husband and sister. The sound of beast-like moans and rustling clothes. It was clear what they were doing. I felt my blood drain away and immediately left the room. My own heartbeat echoed throughout my body. And that's when the blood drained from my face and rushed to my head. What are those two doing in there? Do they understand their relationship? Knowing that my daughter and I are on the same property, what kind of nerve do they have? I felt sick with disgust. I wanted to bang on the door right then, but I decided to calm down. I locked the room from the outside. My parents had installed a lock on this room alone to stop my brother who used to sneak out at night on his bike. It was a simple lock that just needed to be hooked and turned. The two of them didn't notice, too caught up in their act. The room has windows, but outside is a high brick wall. Escape is impossible, effectively, I had trapped them inside. Back in the main house, my daughter looked worried. Mom, are there ghosts there? Yes, Lily, don't go near it, okay? I thought I heard an animal. Hearing this, my grandmother began praying towards the home altar. So it has appeared, a lowly animal spirit. What do you mean by it has appeared? With a solemn face, she began. The year before last, a family of mice took up residence in the detached area. We had to drive them out because we couldn't have them multiplying. It's their curse. Wasn't that unavoidable? I've always been worried. I can't forget the resentful look in the mouse's eyes as they fled. Grandma. I don't know if mice have such powers, 
But Grandma's eyes were not joking. Eek. Begone, evil spirit. Grandma, that's scary. It's okay, dear. I'll take care of it right away. Grandma stood up briskly, her eyes sharp. Catherine. Fetch me something to hit it with. What? What could possibly be used to hit spirits? I handed her a long broom, thinking it might do. You mouse, get out. Despite her bad leg, Grandma headed towards the detached area with a brisk jog. Grandma. Be careful. Don't stop me. Let's go. Worried about the two being discovered, I dashed after her, relieved that it seemed to be over. The door to my brother's room shook, and from inside, a voice said. Is someone there, open it, please? Whether from alcohol or too much fun, my sister's voice sounded hoarse. My daughter screamed in terror and hid behind me. Grandma raised the broom. What's this? A talking mouse. I shall vanquish you. Grandma believed it was a mouse without a doubt, broom in hand, ready to open the door. I panicked. Inside was a scene I couldn't let Grandma or my daughter see. It's dangerous, don't open it. Grandma, the mouse might be sad. It might attack us suddenly. Is that so, indeed? We managed to calm down the excited Grandma. Meanwhile, from inside, open it, quickly. Continued. Knowing who was inside, I told Grandma. We can't handle this on our own. Let's call a professional, like a priest or a medium, to perform an exorcism. Yes, that sounds like a good idea. Let's go look for someone right away. Let's do this so they can't escape. Grandmother propped a broom against the door. This way, even if the lock is opened, the door won't move. Let's go. We quickly got ready and got into the car. But really, where should we go? Having set off, what exactly is a professional exorcist? And knowing the situation inside the room, we can't really have it exorcised. After driving for a while, I checked on grandmother in the rearview mirror. And she seemed to be dozing off, perhaps tired. Grandma, are you okay? Hmm. Yes, I'm fine. Where should we head to? I'm hungry, let's eat. Really? Are you sure? What do you mean? Grandmother looked puzzled, seemingly having forgotten. I'm hungry too, mom. My daughter said this. If that's the case, I'll forget as well. The dubious circumstances in the annex, the fact that I locked the door, let's forget it all. It was a mouse. Yes, a ghost of a mouse. Better off not being there, and since they can't escape as is, it's fine to forget and leave it be. We enjoyed a leisurely meal at a fancy restaurant, did some shopping. We returned home as the sun was setting. Grandmother had completely forgotten about the ghost and seemed thoroughly satisfied. Mom? There are lots of police officers in front of our house. Just as my daughter said, there were several patrol cars and police officers. With neighbors gathered around our house. What did those two do? I asked the police officer. What happened? Did something happen at our house? Grandmother also looked anxious. As the police officer started to explain about our annex. Grandmother suddenly remembered and gasped, that's right. The mouse ghost. She remembered. Grandmother went back into battle mode. But it seemed unnecessary. In the center of the onlookers, I saw my husband and sister being questioned. According to the police officer, they had been climbing the brick wall. A neighbor thought they were burglars and called the police. They weren't climbing but rather coming down, I suppose. Who would have thought they'd try to escape through that window? I had my grandmother and my daughter go inside, and I stayed to talk with the police. I'm telling you, we're not burglars. My sister's ability to remain defiant in this situation was, in a way, enviable. 
If it had been me, I'd be too embarrassed and wishing for crawling under the rock. In contrast to my glaring sister, my husband, upon spotting me, gave a sheepish grin. Man, what a mess this has turned into. After saying this to me, he turned to the police officer with an indifferent expression. So, there's no criminal activity here, right? We're all good. His casual demeanor irritated me. After causing such a commotion, you think it's just okay? Planning to pretend nothing happened? Okay. What was the reason for climbing the brick wall? That's because, we were locked in. Why? What were the two of you doing in the annex? Well, that's... My husband quickly apologized. Forgive me, Catherine, I was just, possessed for a moment. Hearing this, my sister lashed out. Hold on. You're the one who invited me, right? I didn't invite you. Huh? If you tell me to come stay because you're staying at your parents' house. I'm going to think I was invited. So, their affair wasn't just a spur-of-the-moment thing. I thought my sister had seduced him, but it was actually him. I never said we should do it here. You were the one excited by the indecent magazines in the room. No. You stripped first. Am I cold for being detached in this situation, as his wife? It's more like I'm speechless and don't want to be involved. But I can't just stand by. This is my husband and my sister we're talking about. Both of you are disgusting. Don't you have any sense of decency? Do you even understand what you've done? It's like you're animals in heat, not humans. I said this with contempt. My sister had a defiant look, apparently not feeling guilty at all. My husband was sweating and looked disturbed. I was wrong. Don't come any closer. I got carried away, sorry. My sister butted in. John was saying he enjoys it more with me than with you. Catherine. He said he can't have fun without me anymore. I didn't say that much, did I? Please, continue doing so, forever. Catherine. That's not fair. Listen to me. At that moment, Grandmother came running from the main house with a frying pan on her head. Accompanied by my daughter wielding a fly swatter. Hey. Prepare yourself, mouse ghost. She seemed to have remembered. Fully in battle mode. I understood the situation. But my sister and husband were too shocked to speak. Show your tail, she said while lifting my husband's shirt revealing painful claw marks on his back. A witch. She has witch's claws, grandma. A witch? This person is definitely a witch. Lily pointed at my sister. Grandmother looked up to the heavens, trembling. A mouse and a witch, this is a haunted house. Get out. Get out right now. The police officer looked suspiciously at them. The homeowner is treating you like strangers, are you sure you're not burglars? Of course not. No, we're not. I'm the daughter of this house. Right, Catherine? I looked at my frantic sister with a cold gaze, I don't know you. I have no family who would seduce someone's husband. Nor do I wish to associate with a husband who's been marked on his back forever. Hey. But. However, having them turn into malicious spirits if they stay in the annex would be troublesome. So they need to leave properly. I'll proceed with the divorce papers and demand for alimony through a lawyer. Goodbye. What? You're kidding, right? The two of them looked pitiful as they cried. No matter what they say, I cannot forgive this betrayal. Grandma, rest assured. The ghost has been vanquished. I thought the divorce would be troublesome with my husband making a fuss, but it went smoothly. Because, as it turns out, my sister was allegedly pregnant. This revelation brought more shock and disbelief than anger. My husband denied involvement, claiming there could be other potential fathers, 
but planning to run away? Ugh. I'm getting morning sickness. Are you okay? You're going to abandon me while I'm having morning sickness? You're definitely the father. Take responsibility. Pressured by my sister, the divorce was finalized, and they got married. My parents were furious when they found out later and disowned my sister. Telling her to do whatever she pleases. Who the father is, I couldn't care less. I never want to see those two again. Especially not my daughter. Let's completely forget about this nightmare. But it wasn't that simple. Turns out, my sister's pregnancy was a lie, or rather, a misunderstanding. The nausea she thought was morning sickness was actually due to liver damage from excessive drinking. Requiring a thorough medical examination. My sister, who moved from the OBGYN to the gastroenterologist, lamented that life wasn't worth living if she couldn't drink her beloved alcohol. Such irresponsibility. A veteran nurse told her, you shouldn't be drinking if you're pregnant in the first place. To which my sister, embarrassed, lashed out in anger. I know that. But I want to drink. You'll end up spending your life in the hospital. No way. Whether it's hospitalization or alcohol abstinence guidance, this might finally calm her down. If it becomes an opportunity for her to reconsider her life, that would be for the best. My newly remarried ex-husband, now seeking my daughter and me, has been desperately calling friends. I was delusional. Please let me make amends. He leaves such messages, but it's bothersome, so I wish he'd stop. After losing his wife and child, he might lose his friends too. Next, may you and my sister support each other faithfully. And enjoy your enthusiastic relationship as much as you like. The annex where it all happened has been exorcised, demolished, and replaced with a new house for my daughter and me. Originally planned by my parents for us, it's a bit too large just for the two of us. Life is long, and who knows, maybe someone else will live there in the future. To prevent any mouse from sneaking in, I'll make sure to lock it up properly. Living with us, grandma's memory lapses have decreased. My daughter prefers spending time in grandma's room over the new annex. If I'm with grandma, I'm not scared even if ghosts appear. Remembering grandma and my daughter's battle mode, I couldn't help but laugh. Sherry, my brother's wife, confidently shared her firm opinion with me. Well, Gina is Pua, uneducated, and from the lower class. She's a troublemaker with a junior high brain, in essence, the embodiment of evil. That's why I don't want her dating my son. That's all there is to it. Today, my brother's wife's perceptions will be completely overturned. It's time for my father to step in. Don't you know, my daughter is. I am Gina, 30 years old. During middle school, I was rebellious. Everyone goes through a rebellious phase, but I rebelled against everything. Even against a gang of delinquents. Without taking high school entrance exams, I started working immediately after my middle school graduation. Now, I'm a single mother raising a sixth grade daughter. I had her when I was 18. The father is not in the picture. The man who would be her father disappeared as soon as he learned about my pregnancy. His workplace and address were all lies. He was truly despicable. Becoming a mother helped me find myself again. I began to accept people's concerns and advice. There are many regrets and reflections, but now I live happily with my parents and daughter at home. I have an older brother. Five years my senior, he is the opposite of me, serious and excellent. He opened his own tax office the year before last. Even when I was a rebellious daughter, he was the only one who treated me kindly. My brother has a wife and a son who turned for this year. My daughter adores her cousin. The nephew is also fond of my daughter, and when my brother's family visits, they play together all day. They're visiting for three nights and four days this summer. Hearing this, my daughter is overjoyed. She is so excited to play with her cousin that she's finishing her summer homework early. I'm looking forward to it too, 
but honestly, I could be more enthusiastic. The reason is Sherry, my brother's wife. She grew up in a private girls' school from middle through high school and attended a women's college. After graduation, she studied abroad and helped at home. Then, just shy of turning 30, she had an arranged marriage, a true lady of upbringing. To her, I, a junior high dropout single mother, seem undesirable. She talks normally when my brother and parents are around, but her words decrease significantly when it's just the two of us. That's why I feel heavy about it. I'm open to getting along, though. One summer day, as scheduled, my brother's family arrived. Welcome back, brother. Sherry, you must be tired. I'm home. Ah, oh, Gina, thank you for having us. As my brother and sister-in-law got out of the car and unloaded their luggage, my daughter pulled my nephew into the house, and I helped them with their belongings. While helping, my brother said regretfully, Sorry to say this right after arriving, but I'll have to leave my wife and child here and go back. What? I just got an urgent job. I'll come back after finishing, but I don't know when that'll be. That's tough. Take care. It's only the third year since he started his business. He can't afford to slack off as it's finally picking up. My brother greeted our parents and then rushed back to work. My sister-in-law and I waved to my brother as he left. Brother, your work seems tough. As soon as the car was out of sight, Sherry quickly entered the house. It's like she can't hear my voice. Even though that's not the case. I did talk to her, looking her in the eyes. As soon as my brother left, this is how she acted. Oh well. I knew it but it was still a shock, so I deliberately entered the house a few steps behind. Inside, I heard Sherry's cheerful voice. Mom and Dad, thank you for having us for these fur days. My husband has gone back, but please let me help with anything you need. It's okay, Sherry, just relax and take it easy while you're here, Gina is here too, so you can just sit back and enjoy your meals. Gina, looking forward to it. Sure, Sherry. What was with that cold attitude just now? Is she a different person? My mother only knows Sherry's pleasant side. She knows that Sherry and I don't get along well, but that's it. My father feels the same. The saving grace is that my daughter and nephew are happily playing together. If the children and my parents can have a good time, I can bear the slight hurt in my heart. As long as Sherry and I don't have to be alone together. We had dinner and chatted together. Spending peaceful time and getting ready for bed. My mother asked me to turn on the air conditioner in the upstairs guest room. This room used to be my brother's and his family will be using it for these three nights and four days. The guest room, filled with the heat of summer, was hot. I switched on the air conditioner and was about to head back to the living room. Yikes! I let out a strange cry. Sherry was peeking into the room from the doorway with a mask-like expression. It was like a horror scene. I thought a ghost had appeared. I calmed my racing heart and spoke to Sherry. What are you doing here? Mom said you were sent to turn on the air conditioner. I said I can do that and followed you up here. She's always so nice to my parents. I could hear the happy voices of my daughter and nephew from downstairs. Sherry frowned at their voices. Your daughter, she plays so well with my child, doesn't she? Yes, she was looking forward to playing together. Could you stop them? What? Sherry said in a matter-of-fact tone. It's bad for their education. What? Responding with threats like that. This is why people with only a junior high education. Wait a minute. What does my education have to do with my daughter? If a parent isn't decent, the child won't be either. A parent must protect their child. It's natural to keep them away from bad influences. I was furious. Was she picking a fight with me? I may not have much education, but my parents help and support me where I lack. Please stop using my shortcomings to insult my daughter. That's right. The main reason I haven't left home is this. People with only a junior high education as parents. It's pitiful for the child of a single mother. I've always been told such things behind my back. And directly too. 
If it's bad that I'm raising my child alone, what if I seek my parents' help? Wouldn't it make it harder for others to speak ill of my daughter? Wouldn't it reduce the chances of her getting hurt? That's why I decided to stay at my parents' house. My daughter is being raised smart and sensible under the watchful eyes of my parents and me. I don't want her to be compared to the rebellious teenager I once was. Gina, you can think what you want. But parental qualities do get passed on to the child. The thought of your lack of qualities affecting my son is horrifying. Well, I won't say they can't play because of my in-laws, but please keep it to a minimum. Excuse me. That's rude. I don't think so. With that cold remark, Sherry closed the door. I was left alone in the hot and dark room. Speechless. It seems like Sherry is stepping up her game. Until now, she just had a two-faced attitude. But to come out and say something like this to my face. Is it a case of hating the priest and disliking his robe? I think it's wrong to involve children in adult matters. I'm so angry. The noise of the air conditioner starting up was loud. Being spoken ill of my daughter hurts the most. I wiped the sweat and tears from my forehead. The next day after that incident, my daughter and nephew were playing happily together from the morning. Sherry sometimes gave me a look as if she wanted to say something, but I ignored her. I don't want to bring adult biases into the children's world. I spent the day making sure not to be alone with Sherry. After dinner, as I came out of the bathroom, Sherry was waiting for me. Just when I thought I'd avoided her all day. She was glaring at me with bloodshot eyes. It was like the start of a horror movie again. I told you yesterday, your daughter is too close to my son. What's that about? Gina sighed. It was your son who came to her this morning saying, let's play. You should have ended it at a reasonable point. They both seem to want to play more. They get along well. Sherry twitched her mouth, annoyed by my words. Get along well. Don't be mistaken. My child is just being nice to her. Maybe. But since they're playing together all the time, it seems he doesn't mind playing with my daughter. It's not something for parents to worry about. This is why I can't deal with idiots. I may be an idiot, but my daughter isn't. If the parent is an idiot, the daughter must be too. She's flirting with a boy who's not even of age yet. What? Flirting? What is this woman talking about? Is my sixth grade daughter flirting with a four-year-old boy? What did you see to think that? Are you the idiot? You're the idiot. A low-educated, poo -a single mother leeching off her parents' home. You're a disgrace to the family. Poor. My child goes to an elite kindergarten where doctors, CEOs, and politicians' children gather. I've created a good educational environment for him. But it's pointless if there's trash like you in my husband's family home. Seems like you don't know what real trash is. Trash is like that scumbag who got me pregnant and then disappeared. You know so little about the world. Can you raise a boy? Can you handle it when he calls you a crazy old lady? I'm worried you'll call his girlfriend disgusting or filthy dot. My child would never say that. I'll choose his partners for him, of course. Scary. Sherry, that's bad for a child's development. What do you know? I've been putting up with it until now, but I've reached my limit. I don't want to catch stupidity from you, so let's end this relationship. Sherry shouted hysterically. That's when it happened. Are you two done talking? Eh? Father appeared from behind Sherry. He looked very stern. I heard everything you two were talking about from the living room. The grandchildren are startled. How did this conversation start? Eh, um... Sherry was flustered and her voice changed. It's too late to pretend now, I think. Apparently, it's bad that I'm a junior high graduate. Because I'm stupid, she doesn't want her son to associate with me anymore. Sherry, what's this all about? Um, well, I, I just want my child to play with someone who's a good match for him. Father's gaze was fixed. Sherry was stammering. I get it, I get it. Those eyes of dad's are scary. I know it too well, having been lectured by that look countless times during my teens. Sherry hurriedly tried to cover up her words. I didn't mean to speak ill of you. 
Father-in-law, you've worked for a listed company for many years. Mother-in-law has always supported the family. I think both of you are wonderful. But you intend to speak ill of my daughter and granddaughter. Gina is Pua uneducated and from the lower class. Sherry stated decisively. She's a troublemaker with a junior high brain and in essence, the embodiment of evil. I don't want her around my son. That's all there is to it. True, I was a rebellious girl in my teens, not listening to my parents or teachers. And yes, being an unmarried single mother is a fact. I guess I can't blame someone like Sherry, who's lived a straight, successful life, for disliking me. But, even so, her thinking is rigid. Apart from prejudices against single mothers and junior high graduates, she thinks she should decide her child's friends. She's just a monster. Maybe we were wrong not to explain properly. But still. Father spoke up. Don't you know, my daughter isn't Pua. She has her own company and is making a profit. What? Hello. I'm the president. What? Yes. As dad said, I run my own company. It's a web-related business. It all started when I began working from home as a web designer while my daughter was young. I struggled since I hadn't studied much before, but I got through with my rebellious spirit. I started with one-off jobs, then moved to contract and full-time positions. I established the company when my daughter started elementary school. Though it was tough, the company grew steadily and now has an annual turnover of $150,000. It's still growing. So, I could move out of my parents' house whenever I wanted. I'm not poor at all. And there's a bit more information I need to add for her. I also loaned the startup capital to my brother, you know. What? Better than borrowing from a bank, right? Didn't my brother tell you? I don't understand anything about work. Hey, it's family. Since it's a family business, you should know a little about it. Quiet, I'm busy with my son's education. He has lessons every day. We go to musicals and art museums for every special exhibition, all for his cultural education. You've probably never been to an art museum, Gina. I don't go to every exhibition. But I do go to the Board of Education every term. Oh, your daughter gets called in, how sad. But my single comment still got under Sherry's skin, despite her being all over the place. Enough. Can't you understand how it feels to have your child insulted, Sherry? Father's angry shout rang out. Sherry looked like she realized her mistake. Did she forget until now that father is my parent? A student being called in by the Board of Education? That's absurd. A few years ago, I took a petition to the board. A request for a gynecologist to teach classes in middle school. I did it as a reflection of my ignorance. I wanted to ensure that current students don't repeat my mistakes. I'm involved in various things related to that, like a special class initiator. Sort of an organizer? Sherry looked at me, dumbfounded. I made a peace sign with both hands towards her. Sherry, you're misunderstanding things. I may be a stupid high school dropout, but it doesn't mean I'm doing nothing. Don't make it sound like being a stay-at-home mom is bad. That's not what we're talking about, though. Sherry glared at me, her face twisted, biting her lip hard. I'm leaving. With that, she passed by father, picked up my nephew who was in the living room, and stormed out. Then, my nephew said in an angry tone. Mom, I heard the conversation. Then Auntie started crying. She said, playing with me will make you stupid, and cried. You know, the teacher at kindergarten said we shouldn't use infectious in a bad way. Eh? Mom, aren't you going to apologize? Quiet, be quiet, we're leaving. Sherry grabbed only her son and her purse and dashed out. I hugged my daughter, who was crying in a corner of the living room. I'm sorry, it must have been scary and unpleasant. It's okay. I'm used to things like this. But you shouldn't be spoken to like that. It's just baseless accusations. Used to it. What do you mean? I'm crying because I'm frustrated. I can't forgive her for saying such things about my mom. Wah? I was surprised to hear the reason for my daughter's tears. 
she was crying for me, out of frustration. She's just like me, stubborn. No, no. Rather, I felt how well I've raised her. Thank you. I hugged my daughter tighter. Later, my brother came to pick up the things Sherry left behind and to apologize. Well, both my parents and I had cooled down by then. I had gone too far in some of my remarks, and father had lost his calm and shouted. How is Sherry doing now? My brother looked troubled at mother's question. She's getting enthusiastic. She says if Gina can manage as a president, there's no reason she can do it too. She's fired up about starting her own company. Oh. What about her monster parent tendencies? I knew she was focused on education, but I never thought she'd have such an elitist, discriminatory mindset. We're discussing our sin's educational policy. I want to let him freely explore his interests, not micromanage everything. But my wife insists everything should be chosen and given by the parents. So we end up fighting every time. Wow. Well, that's expected. I couldn't help but worry about the future of my brother's family. All the while, my daughter was still visibly angry, completely ignoring my brother. And then Gina and her daughter munched on the box of sweets her brother brought. After having her fill of sweets, her daughter eventually came out to see her uncle off. After he left, Gina said to her daughter, Feeling better? It's sad for uncle if you act like that. Mom, I've been thinking too. Eh? Uncle came to apologize, right? If he had forgiven right away, it would have been uncomfortable for him. Someone had to show they were upset but willing to forgive. You were thinking that? Wow, my daughter was more grown up than I thought. Children grow up when you least expect it. Three years later, her daughter became a ninth grader. She's decided on her high school through recommendation. I'm a bit relieved she's choosing a different path from mine. I don't think being a junior high graduate is bad, but I don't want her to go through the same struggles unnecessarily. As for Sherry, following what my brother reported, she started her own business. Using her English skills from studying abroad, she opened an import goods store. She was eager not to be outdone by me, but to put it bluntly, it ended in a big failure. Just as I thought. Problems with suppliers and frequent troubles occurred. Renting a large, well-located store out of vanity was a mistake. My brother helped as much as he could, but the store closed, leaving debts. Unable to accept the failure, Sherry returned to her parents' house and shut herself away. My brother seemed to think the failure was for the best. He had hoped it would broaden her perspective. But it didn't. The business failure was blamed entirely on my brother and me. They are currently undergoing divorce mediation. This weekend, my brother and nephew are coming home. I plan to have them over at my place. Not at my parents' house, but mine. Yes. I bought a house. I stayed at my parents' house thinking it was for my daughter's sake. As a result, she grew up more solidly than I expected. She's a good kid, someone to be proud of anywhere. She's grown up so much. I need to focus on things other than just parenting. My parents are getting older. There might be times when they need help. Since graduating from junior high, I've been overly reliant on my parents. Now it's time for me to step up and support them. Sorry, but I took the wonderful fiancé. Are you upset? Jealous? Why do those who can only look down on others end up with such ugly expressions? The once cute face of Angela seemed twisted in front of me, as if it were a lie. Not just towards me, but she looked down on my husband as well, along with her own partner. My anger reached its peak, surpassing my patience. My name is Kim. I'm 27 years old and work at a printing company. I don't operate the big machines, though. My department is in design, where we think up and design flyers and catalogs for various industries based on our clients' requests. Even though the number of prints has decreased due to digitization, the design work is busy and fulfilling. Fortunately, the number of clients who request me has increased. 
The flyer for the Christmas event you designed was a hit because it was so cute. Hearing that makes me truly happy. My work could be considered my reason for living. I thought I might end up single for life, dedicated to my job. But then one day, my father was hospitalized for appendicitis. It was during a visit to see him that a young doctor greeted me, asking if I was there for a visit. That doctor, Ted, is now my boyfriend and recently became my fiancé. Life is unpredictable, you never know where you'll find a connection. Even though I used to say I was dedicated to my work, the moment marriage was on the table. I found myself buying wedding magazines. Sitting in the living room, flipping through the pages with a cup of coffee. When suddenly, a hand reached out, snatching the magazine away. Hey. What's this? A wedding magazine? Why are you looking at something like this? It's none of your business, Angela. It was Angela, my sister, who is two years younger than me. Who suddenly took the magazine from me. You getting married, huh? Look in the mirror before you say that. You'd better understand your own worth. Unlike you, I've never been without a boyfriend. Oh, and about my current boyfriend. No one was listening, but she began bragging about her boyfriend. Angela has always been like this. Unlike me, with my plain face, Angela has a very cute face and has always been popular. Everyone around Angela indulged her, except for our parents and me. Her world was filled with yes, men, constantly affirming her every action and word. As a result, Angela came to view herself as the center of the universe. This arrogance led her to start looking down on me, her older sister, somewhere along the way. Don't come near me. I might catch your ugliness. No matter how much you study with that brain, you won't get good grades. Why bother with such futile efforts? Ah, uh. I got confessed to again. Being too popular is such a hassle. You must be jealous, not being popular at all, she would say. Even when our parents scolded her severely, it was too late. Angela's character didn't change, and the verbal abuse towards me never stopped. As adults, she now addresses me disrespectfully. Fed up with Angela's boyfriend bragging, I finally said. I do have a boyfriend, actually, we're engaged. I'm looking at this magazine because we're getting married soon. Her actions halted at my words. She looked at me intently and then smirked sarcastically. Wow, there's actually someone out there with such poor taste. What did he see in someone like you? He said he likes my energy and brightness. That sounds fake. You're probably just treated like a housemaid. I'm going to keep working, so he knows I can't be the perfect housewife. Angela reacted with exaggerated surprise to that. What? You're going to continue working even after you get married. Poor thing, you must be marrying a poor man. Those words irked me. It seems she can't be satisfied unless she's looking down on me. Money isn't an issue. He's a doctor and doesn't have any problem with income. It's just that I want to continue working. After I retorted, Angela fell silent. Sighing, I went back to my room, unaware of her meaningful mutter, a doctor, huh, interesting. When the topic of marriage came up, the first thing to do was, of course, to meet the parents. Ted came to my house for the introduction. The atmosphere changed instantly from cordial to tense the moment Angela appeared. Oh, so this guy is your fiancé? He's quite handsome. Angela. Weren't you supposed to be out? Cancel plans when my sister's fiancé is visiting? Obviously. I was relieved, albeit accidentally, that Angela wasn't around. I had a bad feeling because, in the past, when we were still students. She had stolen my boyfriend several times. After becoming an adult, I hadn't had a boyfriend. And Angela continued to move from one boyfriend to the next, so such incidents hadn't occurred. 
Though it was troubling that Angela had returned, I hoped, now that she was an adult, she wouldn't do something like stealing my fiancé. Yet, Angela was overly familiar with my fiancé, and Ted seemed to blush. Confirming my worst fears, can we pretend the engagement never happened? I've decided to break up with you and date Angela instead. I never thought I'd have my boyfriend stolen by Angela even as an adult. Sorry for taking your fiancé. But it can't be helped, right? He was so into me because I'm cuter and more attractive. Being cute is such a crime. Angela's words were anything but an apology. And her smug, condescending attitude was infuriating. Ted, now my ex-fiancé, laughed and added. Really, I had no idea you had such a cute sister. If I knew, I wouldn't have engaged you. Lucky it's before the wedding. At that moment, seeing his twisted smile. Any feelings I had for him vanished completely, leaving only disgust. I'm glad too, that I won't be marrying someone like you. A man who easily goes to another woman can be gifted to Angela with a bow on top. What a sore loser. Really. Such an unattractive woman till the end. It wasn't out of bitterness, but a sincere thought, though it seemed lost on their deluded minds. Spending any more time with you two is a waste. Goodbye. Keep your sore loser comments to yourself. Talking to you is a waste of time. Won't see you ever again. Bye. They looked down on me till the very end as they left. Later, my furious parents banned them from the house. And though I heard they got married through the grapevine, I couldn't care less. Three years after separating from Angela and her husband. I turned 30 and was still diligently working. During this time, a client named Steve started to appreciate my work and became a repeat client. As Steve and I talked through our work, he asked me out to dinner, then to a date. And during one of our dates, he asked me to be his girlfriend. I was genuinely happy. Steve seemed very sincere, and I believed he wouldn't do what my previous boyfriend did. Yet, the trauma from Angela still lingered as a significant trauma. I couldn't help but be a bit concerned, so I honestly shared everything with him about Angela. Regarding my ex-fiancé, I even showed him a photo of Angela to gauge his reaction. However, looking at Angela's photo didn't change his expression at all. He casually shifted his gaze away from the photo and gave me a kind, gentle smile. I know this might sound strange, but, back in the day, I was quite popular. I've met many women, prettier and more attractive than your sister. But for some reason, none of them really sparked anything in me. I was beginning to wonder if I'd end up alone, without ever really connecting with someone. But that changed when I met you. What do you mean? I believe I have a good eye for people, thanks to my job. No matter how beautiful someone is or how well-dressed, it doesn't compare to inner beauty. Meeting you made me realize that. Um, what do you mean by that? I saw how bright you shine. Huh? When you talk about your work, you're so lively and radiant, it's beautiful. I thought you were wonderful. Not just at work, but also when we're having dinner or on a date. You always seem to enjoy yourself. I could tell you were genuinely having a good time with me. And that you love life. You seemed so brilliantly beautiful to me. Wah, wah, what? Wait a minute, this is so embarrassing. I flustered but Steve continued unabated. Kim, you are beautiful. More beautiful and charming than anyone I've ever met. I've never encountered a woman more wonderful than you. Please, will you consider being in a relationship with me, with the intention of marriage? I truly, from the bottom of my heart, care about you. Stop. It's embarrassing, don't say any more. But Steve's compliments didn't cease. I eventually agreed to start dating him, and his flattering remarks continued for a while. It was so embarrassing. A year later, Steve and I got married, 
becoming a happily married couple. Our marriage felt even stronger than before, and we enjoyed our life together. We shared household chores. Having lived alone for a long time, Steve might even be better at housework than me. His cooking, especially when I was too tired to lift a finger, was incredibly delicious. We often went out together on our days off. One holiday, we went to look at furniture. That's when we had an encounter with the devil, like something out of a nightmare. Ho? Oh? I thought I saw some drab woman here, and it's you. I heard her voice from behind while looking at the bedding section. Even without seeing her face, I knew it was Angela. For years had passed since our last meeting, but she was unforgettable. Angela. There she stood, with Ted, my ex-fiancé, beside her. Angela's appearance seemed harsher than before. Perhaps due to age or her personality, coming through more strongly. Ted, too, was smirking next to her, looking somewhat thinner than I remembered. Fancy seeing you here. What are you doing? Nothing special. Just looking at furniture. This place has a lot of expensive imports, you know? It's not really a place for someone like you. I was fed up with Angela's condescending attitude. Ted was nodding in agreement. Exactly. The store's reputation would suffer if people like you started coming here. We'd all be mistaken for poor people. Just leave already. Their remarks were irritating, but arguing would be a waste of time. I chose to stay silent. However, my silence seemed to provoke them further, and they grew louder. Ugh. How annoying. This high-end store is ruined by the likes of poor people coming here. You probably can't afford anything anyway. Right, right, poor people should just leave. Other customers and staff began to glance over, wondering what was happening. Annoyed, I reached for my husband's hand, intending to leave. However, he didn't move. It was only then that Angela and Ted seemed to notice my husband's presence. Ho? Oh? What are you to her? I'm Kim's husband. Angela's eyes widened in shock. Huh? You married this plain Jane? Seriously? That's brave of you. Did you need a maid or something? Hilarious. I do household chores as well. We both work, so it's only natural. Aww. You both work? Poor thing, your wife has to work because you're so poor. How pitiful. Me, on the other hand, I'm a stay-at-home wife living a comfortable life. We eat out more than half the week. We have the money. So we hire someone for housekeeping. Sorry for being on the winning side. Angela stretched her words annoyingly, infuriating me further. She smirked at me. Sorry, but I took the wonderful fiancé. So you ended up in a poor life where you still have to work even after getting married. And with such an unimpressive man. Birds of a feather flock together. Aren't you just upset? Jealous? It's just like you to marry a man who can't even support his wife. Enjoy your life of hardship, you losers. That was the last straw. It was one thing to insult me, but I couldn't tolerate her saying such things about my husband. You know what, enough. Kim, let it go. Just as I was about to shout, my husband stepped in front of me. Nice to meet you. I'm Steve, the man who married your sister. Even your name is lame. Thank you for that. Here's my business card, by the way. As Ted took the card, my husband continued to look at Angela. You seem to say quite harsh things about Kim. Because it's true. It's my law that ugly women can be told they're ugly. No such law exists. And to me, you're far uglier. Excuse me. Shall we call it the ugliness of one's character? You seem confident in your appearance, but are you not aware that your distorted personality? 
one that only knows how to look down on others, is showing on the outside? His manner was polite, yet his words were sharply critical. Angela's face quickly turned bright red. Don't joke with me. Where am I ugly, tell me? In everything, I'm afraid. Truly beautiful people do not envy their sister or steal their fiancés. Huh? When did I ever envy my sister? People aspire to be near and surpass those they admire. Perhaps, to you, Kim is such a person? That's ridiculous. I was taken aback not only by my husband's words but also by Angela's reaction. I had never considered that possibility. Angela always seemed to look down on me. But seeing her shaken made me wonder. If someone doesn't matter to you, you'd simply ignore them. You wouldn't think to take their partner unless you envied something they had. Something you believed you couldn't achieve on your own. Taking it is a way to reassure yourself that you're better, right? It means you lack confidence. Confident people don't need to do such things, they can live proudly without demeaning others. I'm not jealous. By taking something away, you want to feel superior to others, don't you? It means you lack confidence. People with true confidence don't need to do such things. They can live proudly without undermining others. That's not true. As Angela frantically tried to defend herself, her voice weakened. Hey, this name. Suddenly, Ted's loud exclamation broke the brief silence. Looking back and forth between the business card and my husband in disbelief. He shook Angela's shoulder, his face turning pale. Ugh, what's the big deal? This name. I knew it looked familiar, so I looked it up and... Oh. Huh? Steve Johnson? So what? It's the name of the hospital I work at. Huh? The hospital? Oh, you mean Johnson Medical Corporation. Oh. The chairman and director, Dr. Johnson. That's his son. What? What? It's a common last name, it must be someone else. I've seen him at the hospital several times with the chairman. So there's no mistake. I didn't remember clearly because I saw him from a distance. But... I knew I'd seen him somewhere. If he's the son, he must be a doctor, right? And the company name on this business card is? The company name. Oh. Just because he's a doctor's son doesn't mean he has to be a doctor. And this company. It's a super famous pharmaceutical company. I heard the previous owner retired and the company was handed down to his grandson. That would be me. As the two panicked, my husband gave a slight bow. What did you say? A awkward. Angela screamed almost like a howl, and Ted seemed like he was about to collapse. My husband calmly informed the visibly pale duo. I met Kim through my work before taking over my grandfather's job. I heard about your sister but never imagined the cruelty to this extent. Uh, um, well, you know. Angela was at a loss for words, and my husband then turned his gaze to Ted. Helping people requires compassion, yet you mock and look down on others. Who would want to be saved by such a doctor? Uh, That's a misunderstanding. Ted attempted to justify himself with a pale face, but my husband sharply retorted. Excuses are unnecessary. I'll discuss this matter with my father. Prepare for the consequences. No, no. No. Ted's shoulders slumped in defeat. Angela, still in shock, couldn't recover as we turned our backs on them and left. I sensed we'd never meet them again. With that premonition in my heart, I walked away without looking back. What happened next? Ted wasn't fired but faced a significant pay cut and was removed from any responsible positions. 
It seems he habitually exhibited arrogant behavior towards others and even treated patients coldly. This led to an inevitable outcome where he was suddenly met with cold stares. From everyone around him. It was as if he was sitting on a bed of nails, and in the end, he left as if fleeing from the situation. The community within hospitals spread the word. Making re-employment difficult for him, leading to a challenging unemployed life. As for Angela, it was revealed her extravagant spending had already strained their finances. Even on Ted's high salary. That explained why Ted had lost so much weight, he was more gaunt than thin. After the pay cut, Angela quickly divorced Ted, thinking she could just find another man. However, it wasn't that easy. My husband had mentioned, and I had noticed too. That Angela's once cute face had become harsher, likely a reflection of her inner self. Perhaps because of this, Angela's period of popularity came to an end. I received a call from our parents saying she came to them in tears. Lamenting that no one was paying her any attention despite her claiming. I'm so cute, why won't anyone spoil me? Moreover, she even said. She managed to catch a good man. I need to surpass her. She obviously refers to me. Is there some law in her world that dictates she must outdo me? My husband once mentioned that, deep down, she might actually admire me. Perhaps there's some truth to that. However, that doesn't excuse her actions. In the end, our parents, unimpressed by her pleas and considering it a case of just desserts, turned her away. She vanished into the night, and her whereabouts since then remain unknown. I doubt I'll hear Angela's name again in the future. Meanwhile, freed from the toxic entanglement with Angela and her husband, I've been living peaceful days. My marriage is tranquil. I'm passionate about my work and living fulfilling days. And soon, our family will grow to three. Gazing at the computer monitor, I gently caressed my growing belly, 